What I want to talk about now is insufficient transport layer security. And I've labored that point because this is really the key. Not just do you or do you not have TLS or SSL or HTTPS, and we do tend to use those terms a little bit interchangeably, but is it good? So a good example of this is the guidance here from PCI. And here they're making it clear that they've actually removed SSL as an example of strong cryptography. Now, when we talk about SSL, we are talking about the precursor to TLS. So SSL's time had well and truly passed once we hit the poodle bug of 2014. And even though it was considered a sufficient security control in the past, after that incident and as TLS succeeded it, SSL has now become insufficient. In fact, as of June 30, 2016, if you want to be PCI compliant, you simply cannot use SSL. But there's more to it than just that as well. Here's another statement by PCI. This is not just about using TLS instead of SSL. It is about using the very latest version of TLS instead of SSL. In fact, this version is so recent that there are still browsers in circulation that simply won't support it. But if you want to be PCI compliant, so if you're processing credit cards, you've got to run TLS 1.2. You can't run TLS 1.2 and 1.1 and 1.0. You must run only 1.2. And the other ones must actually be disabled. So that's an interesting evolution of transport layer security. And I wanted to begin this clip by showing that because it demonstrates how things change over time. And that's really important to the point about insufficient transport layer security. Before I do show you a demo of insufficient transport layer security, I want to quickly touch on the OWASP definition. And in fact, they define this as sensitive data exposure. And this actually covers a few different areas. It covers data at rest as well as data in transit. The thing that really stands out in their categorization of it, though, is the impact. Because by its very nature, sensitive data is important information. And exposing it, whether it is at rest or whether it's in transit, is very often going to have a serious impact. So that's just a quick look at how OWASP categorizes this. Let's now move on and actually mount an attack against insufficient use of transport layer security. There are many different examples of insufficient transport layer security, but I want to show you one that gives you a good indication of where things can go wrong. We're looking at the login form at the moment, and we'll see that it is not loaded over HTTPS. Now, I often see this conversation play out. Someone will say, hey, your login isn't secure. I can't see HTTPS in the address bar. And the organization will say, aha, but what you're missing is that if you look at the form, and I'll show you this one here because it demonstrates the behavior, we'll inspect the element, scroll up a little bit, we can see that the form posts to HTTPS. And what you often find organizations saying is that because it posts to HTTPS, then it's secure because the credentials are encrypted when the form posts. Now they're half right it does actually encrypt the credentials when the form posts. But the thing that people miss with HTTPS is that it's not just about encryption. It's also about integrity. And the problem is that when you load a resource over HTTP, you can't have any confidence that it hasn't been modified. Now, how would that impact login security? Well, let me give you an example. Because this form loaded over HTTP, I mounted my own man-in-the-middle attack. So at the proxy level, I modified this page. And I'd like to show you what I did. If I go up here and expand the head, you'll see the last couple of lines here refer to evilcyberhacker.com. And what I've actually done is I've put a JavaScript keylogger on the page. So I've pulled in this external JavaScript file, and then I've set a destination variable which is where key presses on the form should be sent when someone tries to log in. 
Now let me also briefly show you how I did this so that you can go and reproduce it yourself. I'm going to flick back over to Fiddler. And what you're looking at here, taking up most of the screen on the right, is Fiddler's script. Now remember that Fiddler is an HTTP proxy. And when your browser proxies traffic through it, Fiddler effectively behaves like any other point along the network where a man in the middle could intercept the traffic. So think of Fiddler as having the same power as the owner of the free cafe Wi-Fi, or the ISP, or the government with access to the internet backbone. The point is that it's sitting there on the wire watching the traffic. Now what I've done is used Fiddler script to modify that traffic. So we're looking here at the on before response event, which allows us to modify the traffic after the server has responded, but before that response has actually reached the browser. So it's upstream of the browser. Now this happens to be running on my PC, but again, this is exactly what a man in the middle can do at any point along the network. What I've done here is added in Fiddler script that looks for the host name hackyourselffirst.troyhunt.com. It decodes the response to remove any compression or chunking, and it then gets a UTF string from those response bytes. Now I then build up this keylogger, and here we can see the two script blocks which I just showed you in the browser. What I then do is I replace the close head tag in that HTML response with the keylogger and then the close head tag. So I'm effectively appending the keylogger at the end of the head of the HTML document. I then set that into the response body, and that is that. The response that goes to the browser now has the keylogger injected into it. So let's see it all in action. I'm going to go back to the browser, and what that means is that if we now go and we have a look at the network tab, and I go up to email, and start typing, every single key press is being sent off to evilcyberhacker.com. Most people think of a keylogger as being something which infects the client machine. But the concept of logging keys is something that can be done with JavaScript injected into the page. And indeed there are industry precedents of this as well. In fact, we've seen attacks by the Tunisian government against their people who were loading Facebook login pages in securely. Now Facebook has long since fixed that risk, but there are plenty of other sites out there that haven't. So the thing you want to keep in mind with transport layer security is not just encryption of that sensitive information, but the integrity of anything that could have a security impact if the attacker could actually modify it. That is just one example of many different possibilities for transport layer security. And clearly, the answer is to load everything of a sensitive nature over a secure connection. It's that simple. Let's now move on and have a look at one more attack that involves the client.